we have an agenda that uh, we try to follow um, <laughs> in terms of you know the timeline down there. I, I typically fail miserably at that, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, also, for tradition, we like to combine the first two agenda items. One, is there a motion to approve both the agenda and minutes? So moved. And a second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ace Browning. Yeah. I see six participants. So there's like, I see Brownie. Remind me, there's like Zoom and Facebook going at the same time. <laughs> so it's just um, Brownie and Max Tanger. Okay. On the Zoom at this time. Okay. Bringing us the public comment. Brad, do you have anything to share with us? Yeah, um, I just uh, you know, wanted to, to pray or hope I know it's budget time uh, and that you guys are not privy to the discussions that are going on in terms of the county support for various aspects of the Blue Horizons project. But I'd just like to lend my um, vote for for my my word, let, word of support for providing as much effort as you can towards the community efforts to reach 100% renewable energy. Um, and, um, uh, and I hope you will do that. In particular, and Parker and I were talking uh, the other day, yesterday maybe, um, about batting some ideas around. And you know, one of the issues with the Energy Savers Network program is um, a, a lack of uh, capital uh, where they have the opportunity with Duke funding to do a lot of um, low income heating and air conditioning installations. And there will be a lot more money coming from the federal government, potentially, if they can gear up to get in line for those, um, uh, being able to help clients with rebates. And there's also ways for clients to do self funding, a part of, the, of what they can do in terms of low income area. But right now, they have a problem where they can only do so many projects with heat pumps, um, and then they wait for the Duke funding to come. They have to get the funding back before they can think about going to the next project. There's not enough capital to allow them to do multiple projects at one time. And this is a big problem. I know they're looking at loans, but um, Parker mentioned that there's an affordable housing fund of, uh, of over a million dollars that's for affordable housing and it's a revolving fund. And we need something like that for, I think, moving forward to really fund our low income efforts when you know, your reimbursement for a project is going to come after you've done all the paperwork and satisfied all the bureaucrats uh, or whatever. So I would encourage you to look at opportunities like that and other opportunities, just general opportunities to support um, the Blue Horizons project. And, 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 and you know, I can, you guys who know me know I can go on forever. I'll try to keep it up to about one more point. And that is, um, I would like to see the county, I would like to see the Blue Horizons project adopt a goal of 100% clean energy. Um, because right now we have a goal of 100% renewable energy. And I think the way the world is going, clean energy just uh, makes um, more sense and is more in line with the federal government, with the politics, with our utility provider, because it makes room for some of the, of the electricity that we receive to be supplied by nuclear plants. And I don't think there's really any way that we can um, get to 100% renewable without totally supplying all the electricity ourselves within our community. But if we adopt the idea that, well, clean electricity is what we're really looking for, then uh, to me, it just makes it a lot cleaner, more amenable to do, uh, and really more in line with the thinking these days. So thank you. Thanks, Brad. Anyone else for public comment? Going once, twice times. Um, we have some new members that, that were uh, uh, appointed while I was on spring break, which is awesome. Help us with forums and things. <laughs> In addition to your to your ideas and brilliance. Um, so welcome Josh and Bob. Uh, I won't make you I think I'm supposed to make you say a few words. So, <laughs> so please do tell us uh, who you are. And I'm wise. Yeah. That's, a really, yes. that's yeah. a really good idea. That's a really good idea. Um, 
What do you want to start with, Jennifer? Yeah, let's, let's just go around. Let's the just go around. That's, yeah. that's great. So yeah. they'll get to know. Just an all of us too. Good morning. I'm Jennifer Harrison. I'm the Ag and Land Resources Director. And at the County Ag and Land Resources is the Soil and Water Conservation District and Cooperative Extension. Sometimes there's like 10 more staff members in this yeah. room. So, so <laughs> make, make us do this again. Okay. So my name is Bob McDonald. Um, I've been a resident of Bluffton County for about two years. I'm retired. I moved here from Maryland, where I work for um, USDA and the research agencies. First, the one that funded um, grants for agricultural research education and extension. So we uh, work with the Cooperative Extension Service throughout the nation in land grant universities. And then with the Agricultural Research Service. Um, which has locations around the country. So um, I bring a background in, in, in the research on the agricultural issues and, well, I guess in government too. <laughs> uh, my name is Chris Link. I manage uh, I manage farmland for the Southern Appalachian Housing Conservancy, which is a land trust uh, based here in Nashville, work in Eastern Tennessee, Western North Carolina. Um, yeah, do a lot of things. And the community farm. Yeah, manage our community farm. Special property. Yeah. Hello, good to see you again. I'm Terry Wells, I serve on the Bottom County Commission. And we live on the farm where I grew up and the farm. I've been on the farm for many years. And one of kind of the passions that I came on the commission is I served on our ag advisory board for many years and farmland conservation. It's certainly one of my as well as all the other wonderful, important work that we do on this committee. Um, I'm Josh Littlejohn. I've been a West North Carolina resident since like 94. So, Buck County, um, more recently, I think since 2018. Um, my background is in energy efficiency, um, renewables, uh, a bunch of other different things. So, yeah, I'm happy to be of service here. Take some personal on your seven county commissioners. Um, I guess before I became a commissioner, some you know, two or three of the things I really cared about was a creating this committee to work on this kind of stuff uh, uh, more robustly, let's say, like in in, uh, in keeping with our affordable housing subcommittee. Um, it really, all the the coal I showing up in the newspaper, as well as our water, kind of bothered me. So that's part of kind of what I wanted to get out of this, this committee, um, something to continue to work on. Um, and then just reducing people's costs of living through enhancing their, their homes and bringing uh, clean modern technology like heat pumps to their, to their living rooms and basements is, is another goal of mine as well. So thanks for joining us. So I just, I blew my what's my deal? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm Maggie Oldman. I, been serving on this committee, I guess, since we started. I also serve on the National City Council and I chair our Environment and Safety Committee. So I really enjoy getting to lead the government goals together when I can. My background is in um, climate change advocacy. So I started the city's sustainability program and led that as a city employee for seven years. And then the last 10 years, I consult with national and international foundations and nonprofits. And I build coalitions around climate change, often around policy and advocacy, uh, which is really fun. And I really like being on this committee. I'm Ashley Featherstone. I'm the Air Quality Director uh, with Asheville Buncombe Air Quality Agency, which was formerly the Western North Carolina Regional Air Quality Agency. We're part of the Air with Raymond between Buncombe County and the city of Asheville. Jeremiah Leroy. We got to spend an hour and a half with these guys before y'all got here giving them the orientation. Oh, cool. So they're pretty well aware of what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> they probably heard more than they wanted to. Uh, yeah, I'm, the, I'm the director for the sustainability office here. Same. You probably stay with me at this point. I'm Jackie, project manager in the sustainability office, and I guess secretary for this. So. I'm a job with Tyler. I work with the county's communications team and I'm in charge of our public engagement platform where we stream all of our board meetings. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Michelle, you wanted to introduce yourself? We're 
Oh, sure. We've got two new members who are introducing everyone in the room for oh, the beautiful. benefit of everyone's. Hi, I'm Michelle Myers. Um, I am a guest here today. I'll be speaking about the um, Electrify Ash and Welcome Pilot Program. Um, I'm also the chair of the Blue Horizons Project, which is a partner um, in achieving the city's 100% renewable energy goals. I work for the North Carolina Commission. Okay. Thanks, guys. Again, thanks, Josh and Bob. Those of you have questions, wave your hands if something doesn't make sense. Um, Jennifer, you're next. Um, um, clean Water Fund? Yes, Clean yes. Water Fund. <laughs> yes, one of the things we did was create this, this fund and kind of the responsibility of this committee to review what our first set of applications. So, so you guys get to help think, you guys can help us think about this for the first time, really, as well. So, so just to remind you, we had the three applications, $100,000 total in the pot. We had three applications, one from the town of Black Mountain to do the piping under the road to reduce runoff. Um, that bid came in at a, a, that request came in at the full 100,000. We had one from Asheville Greenworks that was to build a trash trout over, um, on Smith Mill Creek right before it enters into French Broad. That was a $35,000 um, ask. And then we had the um, a request from River Lane for $50,000 to do the disconnect to protect um, program, which was disconnecting downspouts, rerouting them to um, uh, rain gardens, rain barrels, um, campaign to educate and then to get action on the ground. Uh, so came in at 185,000 out of the $100,000 pot. So after the last meeting, we went back to try to understand what are the, what could people do with less so that we could get max out of our funding. And um, I sent you all of this in an email, but basically the town of Black Mountain came back and said, we could probably still move forward with 75,000. So um, anything less than 75, the project would likely not move forward. Um, when we looked at the budget for um, Asheville Greenworks project, trash trout and some training is around $7,500. The majority, as you may recall, um, in their budget was staff. So director, program manager, uh, staffing, staffing expenses. They have also applied to other grant programs at the county for some staffing support. So um, if we started with 75,000, we went to 7,500, that leaves about 17,500 that could potentially go to um, Riverlinks Disconnect to Protect program. That program is up and running. This would expand their ability to re have more greater outreach through the program. So they were they were saying for the fifty thousand they could do about a hundred house additional households. So if I just did straight math, um, <coughs> this would a reduction to seventeen five would get us to about maybe additional thirty five households. I don't think it's. The, the math works out exactly that way. I mean, they can still do outreach, but maybe not actually get rain barrels, or maybe we could consult <coughs> on a rain garden, but not, you know, have the money to do the rain garden beyond that 35 households. So, um, you know, uh, it, it's your decision to make. Those were just some numbers to try to help seed the conversation. Um, oh, I'm happy to provide you any more information or. So I was moving, because y'all scored these. Yeah, right. I've not seen that. The scoring that y'all did, like that would help, like because. Oh, sorry, I thought we shared that. Um, I couldn't find it. And, and it wasn't attached to this, the email you're just talking about, it wasn't attached to that one. I don't remember. I think that um, the thought was we didn't want to. <laughs> thinking, but I can. Um, so overall, the scoring came out that um, 
they score in terms of percentages, right? So Riverlink came out on top at 77.14%. Um, then the town of Black Mountain at 54.29% and Asheville Greenworks at 53.71%. Some of the feedback was that um, town of Black Mountain, um, while they do have a watershed management plan for the upper Swannanoa, this particular project wasn't called out in that plan. However, when we reached out to them, all of the um, projects in that plan that have been called out on um, city owned property have been completed. So this was like the next level to um, addressing some additional issues. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that kind of scored lower because it wasn't exactly in the plan. Um, it, it, it was, their, their proposal was a bit short on details. So um, we did call them and get some more information, but um, I spoke to them, Sybil spoke to them, Jeremiah, Jackie, Ashley, other people that scored didn't get all of that information. So. That was another reason that um, it scored uh, lower. Because um, were, sorry, if, if you could maybe summarize some of that new information you got from our last meeting, from, from, from your conversations with Black Mountain. Yeah, um, so, so we found out about why, why it wasn't in the plan. Um, we also found out that um, the, so, what they're act, asking to do is put a culvert under a road and redirect stormwater into some existing um, ditches along the, and um, so this, pro, this project would not just put the pipe in, but would also do some revegetation to slow the stormwater and then fan it out rather than concentrate it. And so this is water that's coming off of the golf course. So, May or may not recall that in the watershed management plan, the project that was identified was to capture the runoff off the golf course in the parking lot. And so this is just further downstream from that. And this goes into um, Tomahawk Lake or Tomahawk, whatever. Um, and so, and then that discharges. Is this down the under the road right in between Tomahawk and the golf course? Which needs a lot yeah. of river for too. Yeah. So um, overall, the, the assessment was yes, this would be a, this would be a benefit. Um, it's I, mean, I don't know if it's exactly what you were thinking when you thought about this fund. You know, like revegetation of a of a stream. You know, I mean, I think <clears throat> that was kind of the thinking. But it is it definitely is a project that would benefit water quality. There, there really isn't a, there wasn't a great question that it will provide a benefit. It was more, um, we just didn't have all the details in the, in the application. And these were the only three applications. These were. We and had some other interests, okay. but they didn't, they weren't in a um, watershed that had a watershed management. Yeah, so, yeah, so after after this conversation, because this this scoring was before you got that extra feedback, right. like after you got that, did you feel like it would have moved up a bit stronger or not your assessment of it? I my personal assessment, and I, I ranked it maybe higher than uh, other people did, um, is that um, yes, it because part of why I ranked it lower was wait a minute. Why aren't you picking some of these other projects that are clearly identified? Once I found out, oh, well, they've already done all of that. And I felt excited that they were motivated to keep going and saw additional opportunity. So for me, that that definitely moved it up. I don't know anybody else that scored if that changes um, any of your thoughts, but I definitely see a water quality benefit in this project. Um, and... Um, we definitely had a couple of conversations with them to say what was the least amount that you could take and still make this project move forward. Because I think one of the things that we're challenged by is we want to make sure that a project actually gets to completion. Um, given that this is a pilot project, we really want to make sure that we have good um, on-the-ground projects. Mm -hmm. so.
Um, I feel fairly confident, and they they weren't worried about the timeline. That was the other the other piece. Two questions. One is what is trash trout, and then secondly is good question. <laughs> <laughs> then secondly is for going back to Black Mountain. Golf course and a parking lot are high polluting environments. Or is anything being done to address this since it's just going straight down into the street? Yeah. So, um, in the watershed management plan, there was a project to address the runoff coming off of the um, golf course and the parking lot, and they have done that. Okay. Um, so, Yes, I guess I guess the short answer of that is yes. Um, we know that all of our impervious surfaces um, concentrate flow, speed up flow, pick up pollutants, um, stuff comes off of cars, sits on the surface, rain comes, washes it straight into the waterway. So I think diverting anything that we can divert from sitting on those hard surfaces and running down is a benefit to our water quality. Um, I don't know, maybe for some it's more creative, it, it takes more creative thinking to get there, but those working in water quality, that's a, it's a, it's a clear um, benefit. Uh, a trash trout is a device that um, is designed to sit in the stream and it basically filters trash from flowing downstream and then uh, they go in and okay. clean it out. Um, yeah, gotcha. yeah, there you go. <laughs> So, okay, yeah, they, they invented a remarkably simple device to solve a simple floating trash problem. Wonderful, okay. thank you. So it kind of funnels the trash in and then collects it all and then they have a group of volunteers that monitor and clean out the, the trash trouts. Great. This is a trash trout junior. I don't know how that's different than a trash trout, but um, <laughs> in this proposal it's a trash trout junior. <laughs> Could you speak to why that was what up below us just impact? Um, okay, so that um, that application, very short on details, um, very, um, so originally when we first opened, in the first window, we um, opened in October, I think, um, they submitted an application and they had three trash trouts for $50,000, however, two were not in watersheds that were um, in our plan. So we um, reached out and said, hey, you know, great proposal, but we can't consider two. Would you please e edit if you're still interested and give us another proposal? Sure. Well, as I mentioned, it's about $7,500 for trash trout and the training. And so the, the proposal went from $50,000 to $35,000. Two trash trouts, fifteen thousand dollars. That's all that came out of the. So, um, so they still wanted all the staffing money and everything. So, um, and like I said, there was little. There wasn't a budget narrative really that kind of detailed the, the funding, the staffing, <clears throat> the. Um, and I'm looking at some other. Um, Timeline wasn't clear. Um, we didn't see we would train people on these days, these days, these days here. It, it wasn't a well thought out proposal. That being said, we know they do this work. We know they know it. It just didn't come across. And so when, we're, when you're independent, just rating a proposal on what you see in front of you, um, I think that impacted the score. I will say I nobody expressed a... Um, fear that this wouldn't happen. Nobody said, oh, you know, we don't think that trash shots likely to move forward. It just wasn't outlined in how it was going to get there. So it sounds it's like the proposal you're giving is instead of choosing some person, you're choosing to try and make them all work at lower costs. I think I thought that was the feedback that we got at the last meeting. Got it. it was to explore, explore that. Yeah. Okay. And we were also specifically wanting to know what was the lowest black mountain, right? Which is still higher than where we were putting it. This is my this is my concern. Like the river link scored the highest. We all felt the strongest about it. And if we go with kind of what you sent out in that email, 
then it's it's not get, it's getting funded at a lower percentage, even though it scored the highest, mm -hmm. which that concerns me from a process of what we're doing here. Just to can we help the conversation? Can we get Excel up here and start typing in some numbers? Sure. Just to help with people's numeric brains. So if we're going to slice the dice, if, if Black Mountain's going to happen, that means there's 25 left to play with, which wouldn't get Riverlink's full. Riverlink's full is 50. Yeah. So we basically would have to choose Riverlink or other. Or or potentially, if you if you left out the green works, right, then that at least gets Riverlink up to a better percentage there. To 25. And, right. Because they ask for 50, yeah. so they get them to 50%. Hey, can I, this is Brownie, can I ask a question uh, from a process standpoint? When, uh, assuming that the commissioners um, invest an additional 100000 into the budget for this coming budget cycle to be approved in um, June, when would the next solicitation for clean water grants from the county's little pool of funding here, when would that go out? Um, I think... If there was, so my goal would be we could do it right in July and get it out there, open up the application period, because what we want to do is give people the longest period of time to get the projects on the ground, especially if they need to get permitting or anything like that. So um, currently we gave, these projects have to be finished by um, at end of FY25. Um, so if we open the portal, the application portal in July, um, those projects would have a bit more time to get done, but they would be finished in FY26 at the end of FY26. Yeah. So, okay. um, and the feedback that we got, we opened the portal for a month and we got the feedback that wasn't long enough and it really needed to be three months. Um, yeah. So here's a suggestion. Um, maybe as maybe as one option. Um, yeah. I mean, I think we're learning a lot from this first round of applications uh, as we go. But we've also got some good good projects here. So, I mean, one option would be to say, but there's just not enough like to fund them all in this cycle. So, I mean, one option might be to say, like, let's fund the Riverlink project at fifty thousand dollars. And let's plan on funding the town of Black Mountain project at seventy-five thousand dollars. But we would have to say basically, like we we kind of approve the project, but it is in light of the limited funding we have from this last year's budget. It is contingent upon the county commissioner's approval of you know at least enough money in the coming budget, but hopefully a hundred thousand dollars. So that that project would have, you know, there'd be enough money to do seven, at least seventy five thousand dollars for that. So, and then there would still be, there would still be some additional money to to consider additional projects in the next solicitation, right? It might if we did it at if we did fifty and seventy five, that'd be one hundred twenty five. So if the commissioners approve another hundred thousand, that would be seventy five thousand more that could be allocated. Uh, in the next solicitation. So anyway, that's just one scenario I think about maybe to kind of anticipate some other funding coming in in you know, a couple of months. Um, so just put that out there. Yeah, in that scenario, in theory, we give them like a partial award and then maybe months later give the town more. That's just... So I just... I want to say this out loud yeah, because no. Cruz not here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that that sounds like committing future dollars uh, before we've adopted a budget. I think legal would have a say about that. It's it's not committing it. It's 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 contingent upon additional appropriation. So if the commission decides not to yeah. appropriate the yeah. funding, then the project doesn't happen, right? But I mean, I just feel like we have a live project here. Um. And I don't know. So I'm just, it would, it, uh, it's not a commitment. It's just a plan, right? So, so let's, <clears throat> let me ask then to, yeah. to the different points being made. 
So if, let's just say we consider doing this, we would be able to go ahead and if, if everyone agreed, right, we would be able to go ahead and award Riverlink 50,000 for that project. That would be the only award that would be directly being made at this time, if that were the case, right? Because then you would have to see, um, to Jeremiah's point, whether or not that's put in the next budget, and then you would be able. So you'd like to carry over 50 and add it to the $100,000 pot of next year? Well, that, if it passes. Well, I'm not saying, I'm just kind of trying to think it through. Yeah, 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 no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I guess the question is, and I, I don't know this, mm -hmm. is that, are those dollars currently in a multi-year fund? Are they in a grant fund? Can we do that carryover? You can definitely do the carryover. I mean, one There's way or like another, we can we, we have had pushback, but we have said that these money's carrying over because they won't. Um, yeah, usually it's reimbursement. We've discussed whether it would be reimbursement or whether we pay a friend if we pay a friend, we don't have to do carryover. But the reality is we know that this yeah. is through FY25. Yeah. And so there's there's going to be carryover. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we would still have funding for Greenworks this year too, though. Yeah. 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 It wouldn't just be the 50000 We could still do the Riverlink for the Greenworks. Yeah. 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 Ye
one of the things that is not articulated regarding trash trout is, is this actually a trashy stream? Do you have documentation of this? Yeah, it's Smith Mill Creek, so it is a okay. higher okay. polluted. Trashy. Yeah, <laughs> it is a highly polluted stream. And, the, and um, litter was called out in that watershed management plan okay. as a pollutant. Then I have an alternative suggestion, which would be that, um, I mean, if you're talking about floating things around, we could always fund the Black Mountain at 75, do, do a, a reduced amount for the river link, but they can come back next year and apply for the remainder. And There's I, nothing I, to stop them from doing that. That means you don't have to deal with all this carryover and, you know, fuzzy money. And Yeah, I, I think that's what I, what I would lean toward is potentially proceeding with the Black Mountain and then with the remainder of that going to river like this time and keeping it clean and not getting into because that one's scalable. Yeah. Yes. And then Riverland can come back easily, right, to apply for additional. And they'll have something to show, right? They'll have some results to show from this pilot project as well. And then hopefully Greenworks will reapply and have a more robust application. I like that proposal. I'd second that. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to. Fun Black Mountain at the seventy-five thousand and River Link at the that make them twenty-five thousand. Yeah, twenty-five thousand. Second. Okay. Uh, motion and a second. Is there any further discussion, thoughts, ideas? Okay. Brownie, any final thoughts or ideas? Sounds good to me. You, you heard the motion. Yes. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. We'll make it. Starting this new program is really cool. Congratulations. That's great. Thank you. And thanks for all the good discussion, too. Okay. Um, yeah, I really want a loan boss reserve. Update that's about to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys would like that yeah. on the agenda. Um, yeah, so no introduction necessary, but I'm, I'm going to see if I can get your presentation up here. Oh, cool. I'm trying to join via Zoom too, and I have it open. So I'll raise it. To me, it was just a 25 minute conversation with a banker over the phone, but we actually had one. I'm not sure it's complicated. Yeah, if you're only in a meeting, then you don't. Yeah, I just got a meeting yeah. and I can share a screen. And... I got you. You got me? Yep. You sure? Oh, All right. Mm -hmm. I think he gave me the other view. Okay. Um, great. So, hi again, Michelle Myers um, here representing the North Carolina Clean Energy Fund. I'm their program manager, uh, newly brought on with um, financial support from the Wells Fargo Foundation so that the Green Bank would have support here in Buncombe County to roll out this program. I'll work on a few different other things to complement it as well, but this is our big project for right now. Um, we had a stakeholder launch event last week, and uh, that was like a soft launch, and we are still a little soft. We are trying our darndest to get everything on the web presence for this together, but I'm here to talk primarily about the loan loss reserve of what you guys are getting your $100,000 investment in the program. I have a couple of these from the launch event, including a flyer on Electric Fair. Um, so I'll just pass these around if you want to take a QR code will link um, to the website, which is the marketplace for this program. Are you guys familiar with it overall? Should I focus just on the banking aspect, or do you want like a little? I do want an overview because we have two new. new okay. Yeah. Two. Okay, great. Um, so. Um, I'm going to speak to the county here, so feel free to like inter interject. Um, so um, this program was really thought up by you guys, um, and I don't know if the, this thing is part of it, because we need something in Asheville and Buncombe County for residents to take really clear action on how to get more efficient heat pump hot water heaters in their homes. Um, I know I can speak from the Blue Horizons project perspective where, you know, this big, big goal of getting to 100% renewable energy is really hard to make tangible and actionable house by house. 
And I see the electrified um, Asheville Black and Pilot program is a way that people can just like, oh, I have to make six choices in the next five years, and that's how I'm going to help us reach our renewable energy goals. Um, and I think right now the heat pump technology is uh, advancing quite rapidly and is where you get the most bang for your buck if you switch out a, a gas fired or even an oil heating system to a high efficiency electric heat pump. So this program focuses primarily there, um, though there's also the opportunity to get an encouragement to get a home energy audit, apply home energy efficiency measures, and um, change out your water heater to a water heater. And for all of that, um, we um, were able to offer this financing package. I'm excited to announce we're going to be working with Self Help Credit Union, uh, which has a great reputation locally, in order to offer um, financing for any approved technology and any contractor that is featured on the Electrify Asheville Fund website. So that's a requirement. It has to be approved technology, and it has to be a contractor that is already working with the Electrify Asheville Fund program and is vetted. Have you already pre vetted those folks? Um, they're being vetted by the, the third Bright Spaces LLC, who's the people that have developed the marketplace, um, and they are working to get those people on the platform. Um, the agreement is that they will only offer the technologies that we that qualify for the program through the marketplace, and you know, licensed. It, it's not like they have to have like the highest Google score ever. Yeah. So it's still, and and we really want as many people to play in this space as possible. That's a question. Okay. So it's like, it's do not you want it to be narrow or broad, and you want it to be broad, broad, free. very broad. And and part of the aim of this program again, again, was to also raise the level of understanding of these high efficiency technologies within the contractor community and get them to recommend them. So some people come up to my house to give me some estimates. They are not always telling you to get the most energy efficient, yeah. environmentally friendly product, right? And I think for them, they're usually looking for changing out life for life or you know what the initial installation cost efficiencies will be with the understanding that you know people might not be able to swallow that high, higher dollar amount up front even though long term it should save them money or at least break it and it would be better for the environment. Um, which is why financing is so critical, right? You can make different decisions if you have access to financing that isn't um, loaded with high dealer fees, has a super high interest rate, or you know, you have to pay off in 18 months and then skyrockets to interest rate, which is some of the competing loan products that we've been looking at. Um, you know, essentially it's like the free 18 month period on a credit card and then it's 22% interest or there's 15, 10% dealer fee on top of it. Um, yeah. So, and then the other big component of the program is to share information about all the federal tax incentives that are available now and hopefully some point of sale rebates that will be available um, in early 2025 coming through the state energy office. Those will be for people who are income qualified. The cap on most of those will be 150% of area median income. So, you know, it's not, for some folks, there's not like a huge pool of rebates coming from the state energy office, but for our communities, or members of our community that are below 80%, it could be as significant as like the entire cost of the project. Um, so that's something to think about too, is that, um, you know, for the, the our LIDAC communities, for low, low income folks, um, we should be able to offer some pretty significant benefits to take advantage of this. And for the moderate income, that's, you know, again, the financing is really essential, so. Um, his rebates and tax credits only happen after you've made the initial investment. Except, well, point of sale rebates will be point of sale. Um, Does anybody know if there's any other states with point of sale rebates occurring quicker than that? I think I just literally read yesterday that mm -hmm. New York yeah. is rolling out their, the first in the country point of sale rebates with, with IRA dollars. Yeah. That are, they haven't actually physically done it yet, but like they're the first ones that are I sat in on a webinar, I think it was Selk was hosting it, and uh, they were talking about how it is different in different states. I think there were proposals submitted, and then like they, the, particularly the fraud protection measures have to be vetted, and then the program implementers also have, they could apply a stricter standard than the federal standard, so the state gets to design their program in some way. And so our state, and Melissa may be able to give some incentives, I'm not sure, but our state is working on what their program design will look like still so not ready to roll out and i think did have to go back with some stricter crop protection measures from their initial proposal as i understand it i think we were on the same email thread about that though so we have to think like for the same probably, yeah, <laughs> anyway yeah. yeah um okay next slide i think 
Okay, so our goal for the financing was to be as inclusive as possible, and that's part of what the loan loss reserve was able to create is a, a loan package um, that is available for people with credit scores below 600. It's actually 550, but we don't want people to know that because then they go get their credit score somewhere else. They're like, I have a 550 credit score. It's like, but if self-help doesn't think that you have a 550 credit score, that doesn't matter. Um, so if it says below 600, um, then we really, uh, what you're actually getting is a discount on the energy saver loan product that self-help has just rolled out and your interest rates are going to be a little bit lower than theirs. So there's a discount on the interest rate that the loan launch reserve was able to, um, to establish. So people in the Electrify Asher Welcome program will get a slightly better deal than people um, that might be able to take advantage of the Energy Saver program in the rest of the state. That Energy Saver program is also still in the works. So thank you so much for encouraging this program because it's actually pushing self-help to make that loan package available and, and work out the kinks in advance of offering the energy saver loan package to other folks. So um, you guys are moving the needle in a big way. Um, you know, self-help credit union, trusted community owned bank um, that it focuses on targeting um, on services that also can uh, be provided for folks with lower income. It's kind of their niche, so we're excited to be working with them. And um, yeah, there's no dealer fees or any hidden things, all of the fees we very prominent on the website, both on the Electrify Ashley Bunkum website, then you'll click through for the published rates on the Self-Help Credit Union website. Um, so what rates are they looking at? Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there is a 2.99% admin fee, um, which again is posted everywhere we can possibly post it. Um, that's to cover the administrative costs associated with this loan. Um, the loan amount, will be as low as 2,500 and as high as 50,000, depending on credit. Um, I think the loan amount, um, it's like pretty pretty solid credit before you can apply for a $50,000 loan though. So there is some stepping that happens in between 2.5 and 50. Um, five, 10 or 15 year uh, loans, um, the interest rates will be fixed, but will be updated every six months. And right now it's between 5.5 and 9%. How's that compare to the market rates? How does that compare to? To if I went to get a loan somewhere else. It's pretty product. comparable. Like 7% is probably what you're going to see right now. Yeah, it's between 7 and 8% on most of the loan products that I've So seen. why is it just lower? 5.5% uh, is significant. Oh. Okay, but there's, I guess, the range. It's a big range. range. A yeah, big range. It, it is a big range, but it's dependent on credit. Yeah, and so we're not able to publish the actual, like, uh, FIFO score rate range on our website. It has to be on the Self-Help Credit Union website because they will update it periodically. But if you go there, it actually breaks down, like, when you jump from 5.5, you know, so if you have pretty high credit, you're going to be getting something much lower, and then the 9% is going to be for people with credit scores around. I think the point there, though, is that if you have a low credit score today, you may not get a loan at all, right? From a lot of traditional lending institutions, if you have a credit score below 600, good luck getting a loan at all. And if you do, it's not 9%. It's significantly higher. But this is still probably much shorter term. And yes, so yeah. this is really a much, still a much better product than the market currently provides. What you probably see a lot of folks doing with credit scores is slow as putting it on a credit card. So and then think about it. You don't pay that off until really when the interest rates aren't there. That's what the H five guys can offer you in your living room. Yeah, they're um, going to give you the zero percent for six months, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one of the we look, we did compare different um, different other lenders that are working in this space. Um, there are a couple of folks that are on the Electrify ABC program that do have a six point nine nine percent interest rate with no fee. Um, so, you know, for me personally, I think I would get a better rate here by one and a half percent or something like that from the other no dealer fee loan option that we're seeing in this community. And then there's other um, loan offerings that, yeah, it's like 18 month payoff and then high interest rates or there's a fee associated with it. So, um, and then this is the standard offering right now. So, not so the loan reserve. Operating would be slightly better. These are our terms. These are our terms. Okay. That's the website um, on the self help credit page. I'm really sorry to say 
it is not, if you click on that link right now, it does not mean that you get a 404. Um, I've seen the, we're in the process of kind of um, making sure that user experience is very fluid and all of the information that is required to apply for the loan is very clear. So they do have uh, a draft website that we've been going through an iterative process of editing and um, they assure me that it will be up today. So I hope it will be. And this interest rates will be like reassessed every six months. <laughs> That's right. So we, we went back and forth on what measures will be included. Um, we knew we wanted to do high efficiency heat pumps. Um, so that was a given, but also we were able to fund up to 30% of the total loan amount can go towards electrical upgrades, which is important because often you need a new panel or you know, need to increase the capacity in your house. <laughs> you might be switching out knob into wiring or something ridiculous. So 30% um, <coughs> of the loan can be applied to electrical upgrades. Um, we are going to include heat pump hot water heaters, which is great because apparently they can be, we thought that it might be around $2,000. So if it was a below the minimum loan amount, it would have to be bundled with other services. But um, we're looking at proposals now that are more like $5,000. So we're really excited that those are um, going to be part of the program. Air sealing and insulation, it can also be covered by this. Um, so that's great. As of right now, Conservation Pros is, is one of the only organs, or one of the only companies offering those services, and they don't have a financing alternative, so we're allowing them to offer financing for the first time, which is great. Um, and um, we wanted to make sure that we were able to um, do the underwriting on loans that were also available for mobile homes. So that's a unique feature that we were able to negotiate with self help credit union. And just, I may have missed it. So who is the two point nine? Nine percent admin fee going to North Carolina Clean Energy Branch. And then self help has where is their fee? It's in the interest rate. There's no fee. Five dollar membership due that is refundable if you tell them you want it back at the end of the loan. Otherwise, you're a self help member and you can vote. Um, yeah, that's any, a, any that's other a member of organization. Just being a credit union, you have to be a member, and so there's a five dollar. Oh, it's not a fee, they've corrected me, it is a fee is a due, and it is gotcha. refundable. Right. Fees are not refundable. Banking terms, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's in banking regulatory compliance. Oh, I'd like to have yours and ask any questions. <laughs> Thank you, Maggie. I just might. Just might. Um, you know, you think you know the lay of the land when you're working, and then you're like, oh, now I'm thinking. And also, <laughs> fine print really matters when people go to jail. Yeah, yeah that's good. And protection. And I'm glad you're bringing that up. You know, we, we're we really, um, it's again, it's really great that we are able to work with self-help and really bring this product to market. And it is going through a lot of details. And, it, and you know, you think we we were hoping to be able to launch this and have it all put together, you know, even a couple of weeks ago. And as we go through the process, it takes a little bit longer than you would imagine. Or I, I'm used to not working in the banking industry. But so we're really, um, Appreciative for a little bit of grace too. I wish that it was all like ready to roll. Um, and and we are so close. I mean, in government world, it wasn't even a year ago. I think it was like last May that we were like, well, let's do this little moss reserve, and like now we have terms. This feels in government. great to me. I only started working on this six months ago. So when uh, <laughs> when when when. When did we see the first loan sign? Like how, like there's been a ton of work to get this far. It's very exciting. Yeah. What's the rest of the run room? I think the press release goes out on Monday and we are, are all of our intention has been that this will be ready Monday. So you can walk, so this just kind of walks through how the, um, <coughs> and then the, electric the process of getting the loan. And, and like it would be our goal that on Monday they can go through. Anybody that was at the launch would have heard me, Dawn. Do you guys remember Dawn? Dawn is the, the general manager, the regional general manager for self help. And I asked her yesterday if, if someone walked into the bridge today, could they move over? And she said she had a meeting today to hammer out the final details. So, Monday's the day. That's awesome. Um, this is the, the just the process of what, like, the application, how the application will throw flow through the system. Everything will go across my desk to make sure the technology does in fact qualify through the Energy Star website and then also is tax credit eligible. That's our standard. Um, and then um, I'm skipping over the first couple steps. 
just think there's many things highlighted there. Proof of income, yeah, that's just, you know, again, the mobile home is included in there. They say their DMV registration. Um, and then the certificate of completion is really uh, pretty standard, but also is an opportunity to get, get like, um, prime the, the customer for getting a follow-up survey, for sharing their story. I mean, so many of, so much work in homes happens through word of mouth that we really want to make sure we're sharing like the success stories of this and, and encouraging, you know, us to go and get a video and post on social media and, and share it out. Um, that relates to my question. How are we going to promote this? It's all happening in tandem. So our Cape Department, the city's uh, communications team, Bright Spaces, the, all the folks in the electric campaign, and Green Belt, we're all on a sort of simultaneous rollout okay. starting next week with Earth Day. You know, that's what we do, right? We wait for Earth Day and then we launch stuff. Um, and so, yeah, it's they've been developing a communications plan for the last several months on getting the word out, using various channels, making sure everybody's banging the drum for this as, as much as possible. And so there's a press release logo out on Monday from the county. Um, and I just know, communications room. Sorry. beyond yeah. press releases, press releases are great, but I want to like, really get into the different communities that want to take advantage of those, like in Muscovy or right, and some other communities that then do a really good job of getting the word out within yeah. their communities. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my because I hear from people constantly. I've never heard of it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I right. do think part of Bright Spaces' function is to be running the ground campaign to basically like create the business development funnel, if you will, or like the residential demand. And so that I think that they have like an outreach part of what they're doing. And then some of us are going to be talking to Greenbelt Alliance later today. And I think as we look towards Greenbelt Alliances, potential contracts with us in the future. I'm hoping that they're gonna have more capacity from with our resources to see like what could that look like and they might be able to play an increased role on community engagement. Because to me like this is the high impact play that we're all collaborating on right now. So making sure that it's as successful as possible, they might be able to ramp up contributions so that we can really we just spend too many times planning a party and no one shows up. And so we need to make sure and I think that Y'all have done a good job of that, but we might have some more that we can do. So it would be nice to hear from, I forget, I've seen presentations from Electrify a couple times, whether it's my city sustainability committee or my city environment committee, and that changes every time. But reminding us like what's their ground game could be nice. It doesn't have to be a presentation or a bit. I forget when they've come to us last year in this committee. Well, I'd like to invite you all to a lunch and learn <laughs> on April 25th. So that the county is hosting that here in this building. About the electric bike. Yeah, so is it online as well? Is it virtual as well or only? I don't know if there's a virtual option yet. What time? On the 25th? Maybe we And yeah, where downstairs? downstairs. Yeah. So, so we get. And it's yeah. lunch and learn. Is that what you said? It's essentially lunch and learn. And part of what we're doing with that is that we're inviting. Some of our folks that work in like health and human services. So they, yeah, I'm sure you guys know this already, but you know we used to follow a lot of the uh, weatherization and heating assistance and various things through Edmund Charities, uh, and we no longer do that. We have brought all of that in house, right? So all of those staff that do that and all of the residents that come for that type of assistance now come directly to the county and their staff. And so we've invited those staff to learn more about this program. So they're processing intake of potential clients. Yeah. And so now if they have all of the services available as the first line of intake, they can be routing towards everything and doing this. Yeah, the SN, the SN, I mean, great. Yeah, okay. that's right. That's right. That's the whole point. And if, could, could someone put that lunch and learn invite at the top of our inboxes? Because there's a couple of people I'd like to invite to that as well. So I also sent uh, the flyer around for the electric fair. So I, the lunch and learn is really to make the county. So I, it's less a public thing, right? right. It's re so I've worn a couple different hats in this whole process. So um, when the lunch and learn was planned, it was with the the county staff, and I was working with Bright Spaces. So and that and the goal of that was really they were just identifying that sometimes the work within the county is a little siloed, sure. and so it's you know the, what a great opportunity to get our sustainability programs 
front of mind for everyone in every department in the county. Okay. So, and we're trying to, I think we're going to invite Buncombe County. I'm definitely switching hats right now to like be blue eyes and spider feather. Um, we're, I think we're going to try to get the uh, AB Tech to come to that as well, um, was an idea. So that's fantastic. Also, on the 25th is the first of the um, what we're calling uh, like uh, neighborhood centered um, like education events. So the East West Asheville Neighborhood Association is hosting a happy hour at Archetype Brewing from 5 to 7 p.m. And Electrify will be doing like a, a the first of their community outreach events, which is more intended to be like a roundtable conversation with community members about what's happening in their house, but that's that's the ground game is to identify uh, neighborhood captains. And this is actually coming out of the Blue Horizons Community Council. It's not it's not necessarily it's being supported by Bright Spaces. That's a good role for y'all. LLC, but the goal would be to and also it's a nice way to get more people involved in that work and creating a pipeline of so if I have like audiences just from campaigning, there's a bunch of places where I'm like, I know this group convenes people that might be interesting. Who do I send those connection okay. emails to? So the Community Outreach and Engagement Committee, which is Jim Talbert and Ed Maggard, I think is how say his last name. Um, they have a spreadsheet running of like how many, who is our neighborhood captain for this campaign? Cool. And so we're kind of like recruiting neighborhood captain. That's awesome. Remind me the date and time of the East West Asheville that we just said. Same day as the lunch and learn. Okay. 25th. Okay. Next Thursday, April 25th. 5th, I think um, it'll start at 5. Um, it'll end around 8, but the speaking program will probably be between 5.30 and 6.30. Okay. First beer is on the East West Asheville Neighborhood Association. Four ounce four. This is great. I think I have to. Oh, here's my oh, contact info. Yeah, phone number. You can email um, for any you know public facing communications around financing. Financing at electrifyabc.com is great. Um, that's the URL on the Electrify ABC website. If you click there, that is up and running. We are doing one more round of revisions, just kind of formatting and making it look very very nice. But it already looks pretty good. Um, and if you have any questions, um, that's how you get a hold of me. Yeah, two, two questions. I, I'd love a, sh a, a short update on in terms of like the clean energy fund and how it's being funded, money trickling from DC to fund those types of things. We got an update on that like maybe two years ago. So look at your if anybody knows. Melissa, are you available? I am available. Hi. Hi, Melissa. Welcome. Hey, everyone. Hi. The I think what I the question I heard was what's going on with greenhouse gas reduction fund. Yeah. Yes, and, and I guess also uniquely to your organization, how, how it's how are you doing these days? How is it being funded presently? How do you think it will be funded six months from now? Great question. The yeah. currently we're funded through philanthropy, and we our business plan calls for us to continue to be funded through a mix of philanthropy fees for work with um, that we might do on behalf of the state energy office or other government agencies through programs that they need um, support on and the um, program income from loans that we expect to make using greenhouse gas reduction fund capital. So those are the three streams and the and I'm not placing bets on the timing of moving to complete self-sufficiency, but our model eventually will be um, community lenders like Self-Help Credit Union or Mountain BizWorks who continued, who are primarily in the business of lending with a mission focus. The, and then to the point of Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund, you all probably read that the first two um, large chunks of that funding were announced recently by EPA, and those are going to be awarded to national intermediary teams who are made up of nonprofits who um, came together for the purpose of being those funding hubs. 
And each of the funding hubs has a particular focus area, sector area flavor. We expect to be able to access um, up to $10 million in funding for um, in the short term for products that we're building. And that might, um, one of the ones we're very excited about that's, that's most well developed on is a bridge loan so that nonprofit organizations who are go who are seeking the refundable tax credit for their clean energy projects so that they've got a way to make those investments um, while they wait for the in internal revenue service to actually process their application for the refundable tax credit so we're building we're designing that product all the nitty gritty nuts and bolts of what that will look like and starting to go out and talk to nonprofits this summer expecting that by fall capital will actually be available that we can access and start making loans oh and we're expecting the the third piece of greenhouse gas reduction fund to be announced on monday by epa and that that's the solar for all so stay tuned on that one two two, two follow-ups is it fair to say the state's written you a check of Nothing, no, no money whatsoever. I'm sorry, say that again. The state's not giving you any money at all. Is that correct? Currently, the, the state, state is giving us no money. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're, we're on purpose. We're a independent nonprofit. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I think my last question is, um, I saw there's an administration, administrative fee in that loan product of 2.9%. that goes to the Clean Energy Fund. I'm just curious to know, if you guys could get back to me with a number, just so I had it in my head, what it would cost Buncombe County to pay you guys in order to avoid that fee existing at all. Sure. Yeah, I'll I'll work up some numbers. Thank you. They I will I will say the um for context, that's a a fairly common way of um, for lenders to handle this kind of indirect lending program where a sponsor organization provides the loan loss reserve itself, but not the operating costs of administering the loan loss reserve. Totally. And we're collaborating with other lenders. And so we're not, um, there's no program income that flows to us from the loans. That program income all flows to self-help. I see. I understand. Totally. Thank you. Anybody else have any other questions on the loan loss reserve? I'm excited. Yeah. That's really cool. Thank you for yeah, taking the time to be here today. Michelle. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, keep, just keep letting us know about opportunities to get the word out. I'd love to type an update at the city's environment committee. So if you're up for that, I can. We'll get one. We could schedule that in. So that like our council and it would be kept abreast of the financial side of this picture. I'd be happy to. Cool. Okay, moving right along to solar on schools, and we have our parking decks over now. If anyone? Oh yeah. I like so, to walk my parking decks and look yeah, straight up like I do. So that's that's. <laughs> I don't actually have that much of an update. The update is really just around the fact that the fire departments are going out to bid on May 1st. So we're just finally, I don't want to get into how long, as long as I wanted to, but we're ready to go uh, with the goal of um, commercial operation dates around the 1st of December. So we expect that before the end of the calendar year, all the systems should be up and running. And how many are we doing? 10? 10. 10. 10. Okay. There's only one that is still That's fantastic. kind of on the fence. Yeah. Honestly, uh, I am one? going to the board meeting for the uh, Scotland Fire Department on April 26th to, to try and lay any additional concerns the board has. Um, but all the rest of them. But all the rest of them are like, can we do this tomorrow? Jerry okay. um, yeah. and I met with the fire chiefs yesterday. I was throwing Duke under the bus yeah. uh, <laughs> for the time it was taking. So, it, it, probably, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely. There's definitely not going on there. Uh, yeah. That said, um, what I really wanted to do was take you guys up to the So we can go check out the 
Oh, yeah. Field trip. That sounds oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> An impromptu field trip? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm texting with Ronnie right now to make sure everything's good. Uh, we have to make sure they weren't physically working still because it's not actually operational until 95% done. Uh, and if they were working, everybody would have to put on a hard hat and all that stuff. It's going to work fun, though. But if they're not, then we don't have to. If they're not, then we don't have to. Okay. Um, so I don't know if we want to officially like it. Oh, yeah, they probably should. Appreciate it. For real fast, though. 10, is it 10 um, fire station buildings or 10 separate fire districts participating? You know what I mean? 10, oh, that's a great question. Yeah. The only one that would be two projects would potentially be uh, Toronto, because they have two fire stations that both are solid candidates. Okay. Um, everybody else would be in the individual one building. One building from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Actually, I had for, if folks aren't wanting to kill. Very on the okay. We can just this little lock. We can tell if you don't want to bring your stuff yeah. with you and come back and get this really fine. But I'll be the journey. Yeah, I, th I think I'll be doing the part. So is there a motion okay. to? Okay. Adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn the meeting at 10 Second. 12. 11 12. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Brownie. Bye, guys. Do you know that we're